to Two Johnny's Podcast. Two Johnny's Podcast. Two Johnny's recording a podcast. Hello, hello, hello. You're welcome to the Two Johnny's Podcast, bringing you all the mayhem and news from the world of the Two Johnny's. I'm Johnny B. And I'm Johnny Smacks. Welcome to podcast number 61, coming to you hard and fast from the big smoke in Dublin. That's right, we've left the wilds of Tipperary and are coming to you from Camden Studio, which we definitely have not chosen because it's in the proximity to Ryan's Paul. Hey. All right, on this week's podcast, we are giving you the ultimate guide to cover bands. And he's the man that makes Smacks weak in his dodgy knee. That's right, Noel Furlong will be here with the news. Uh, Arch criminal and podcast producer Mora <laughs> is here with her mystery topic. She's flat out robbing banks there for the last two weeks, but thank God she's here today. The honeys love their money. <laughs> yeah. On this week's podcast, we have a guest contributor. That's right, Smax's man crush. It's Wexford. Wexford's Matt O'Hanlon is here, and we give his take on the perfect Irish gentleman and what it is to be a gentleman in modern Ireland. We know absolutely nothing about that subject. That's why we got Matt in. Mm. And as is tradition, we finish off the podcast with our yurts and dirts of the week. Yurt, yurt and, and dirt. dirt. Uh, before commencing with proceedings, Matt was arising from last week's podcast, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Evan Murray was on Snapchat. I have a story regarding the tipping section of last week's podcast. I'm 19, living in Dublin, and one night... Are you right, Mara? Yes. Smacks just that's knocked my, my mobile phone off the table. That's my Sorry. fault. Apologies oh, there, Marty. Oh, don't man, she's an arch criminal. Don't miss him. Oh, lad. <laughs> the JCB coming she through your window. <laughs> Let the boys on to us now. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so this lad, he was in the Grand Social uh, in Dublin Town. Myself and a group of lads, they were on it. So obviously the night turned to Jaeger bombs. Usually you get shite measures of Jaeger or the Jaeger is just pure scandalous stuff that's about 10% alcohol. But this particular night, the bartender who was serving me was fairly generous with his measures. So I threw whatever coins he gave me in change back at him. As a result, every time I went back, he would take my order off me first, even though I'd be at the back of the queue. He was getting more and more generous with the measures. Great night, lad. To say I was fucked would be an understatement. <laughs> Shit was like rocket fuel. On my way home, it dawned on me that the cute whore had started giving me all my change in coins after the second trip to the bar. So I must have given him about 40 euro in tips by the end of the night. Anyway, great night all the same. Genius. Yeah, that is that is a good idea. P. Matthew was in touch. He said, in relation to tipping, when I was younger, I was a barman in the local hotel and the only tip you'd get is in the nightclub. A cute whore would tip you early so that when it was busy, you'd go straight to him. I also did barman in New York. Uh, not exactly legal. He has in brackets. I don't know why. If I did a day shift, I got $50 plus tips, usually $80, and throw the bus by 10% to that. But if I did a night shift... No pay because you get 150 or $200 in tips. Nice. Lads would be coming in, throwing the credit card behind the bar. The tills have a function to start a tab. Then next day, he'd come in hanging, asking if his card was there, and he'd settle up, usually throw you 20% on as a tip, and he'd just take it from cash then, from the till. That's nice. Yeah, and the barman in Cali wasn't buying you a drink out of his own pocket. You're allowed to throw out a free drink to regulars or someone you think will tip. They're called buybacks. That was when we were talking about, like, the barman was buying a drink, and he wasn't. He was <laughs> lying to us all this time. I was like, wow, Jim, you're such a good guy. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't should have invited him over here. Lad. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the way, lad. Lads, I'm working in pubs and restaurants all my life. First thing I'd say is, never tip through the card machine. You don't know where it goes. Every place I've ever worked in, the tips have been pooled with a cut heading to the kitchen. Never really get tipped on the bar, but you'd often get told to take one for yourself. And I'd say once the bill goes past 30 euro, 90% of people do tip. Ah, decent enough. Uh, well, lad, love the podcast. Just on the topic of tips, I work in a bar and restaurant where we have a tip jar. And at closing time every night, the tip jar gets divided up between the staff. But there's a bit of an issue with this. First of all, the people who do the early shift, example, nine to five, don't see any tips mm. because of the fact it gets divided at closing time. And the people who work in the bar side of the things rake in the tips at closing time and spend it on pints. Oh. And to answer your question, I'd say only 35 or 40% of people tip. And it's usually people with, people with a bigger bill who tip people who have a hundred dollar, hundred euro bill would often leave a tenner. But the majority of people with smaller bills, 20, 30 quid, don't tip. Throw me down as anonymous if you use this, by the way, because I don't want to get the sack. And that was Peter Ryan. <laughs> <Get on. laughs> That's a shit system. You know, like the people who work 95 aren't there when the tips are split. Yeah, That's yeah. fucking stupid. It is, yeah. Come They're on, getting... come out with a fog, lads, will you? Yeah, you don't want to be working 95 in that place. Uh, the Lem Dooley. Lem Dooley. Well, Johnny, just regarding tipping for the bar staff. I'm a barman and also in college during the week and have been working in a bar for over two years. Tipping would only work in a city as in towns, especially around tip. Won't drop the name of the town. 
Nina. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> People are dripping with ignorance and they barely pay for drinks, never mind consider a tip. They know they will see you again next week and they don't want to tip you. That's St- Stephanie Nina. And lamb dooley sounds like it's some sort of awfully curry dish. <laughs> I'll have a lamb dooley and rice. <laughs> I love that. And a nan. <laughs> yeah, they'd actually give you someone's nan then. Um, like nanny. Um, tip. Oh yeah, here we go. We got an anonymous on Snapchat. Tip 15% in Canada and the service is shit enough. They expect it so they know you're going to tip. You would be shamed if you didn't tip, but they're all rides, lad. <laughs> oh, in Canada. Comes in from an extremely horny man in Canada, I would imagine. <laughs> Alison emailed podcast at the two Johnnies that to say, I totally agree with Maura buys and to... I totally agree with Maureen because the boys are total gossips. They love to rate us and love talking shit about girls. Girls are not bad. Sure, if there's nothing to report, we just won't mention getting with them. Oh, yeah. Mm. So. Oh, if there's, no, if there's no story, if it was just grand, they just won't talk about it. Yeah. If it was. <sighs> Something unusual now. Yeah, if it was average or. Hmm. Oh. Either. If it's average, they won't talk about it. But if it's really bad or really good, then they will. Shut. <laughs> you worried about what part of the spectrum yeah. you fall down? I know, I, I know, I know what part I fall. It's, uh, quick, <laughs> get in and get out. <laughs> <laughs> on minority sports, on you said. Well, I just listened to the podcast there about rodeos. A woman I work with used to have a pub in Bodavent. Is that Limerick or Cork? Bodavent. I've actually been it's out in, in Bodavent. Cork, yeah. I was at twenty first there one night. Oh my god yeah, this, go this is about you And uh, years ago They had a rodeo Out the back As some sort of fundraiser They <laughs> built A shoot and all for it They had a great day of it until, until all the riders Got wise To their tricks And all the bullocks Got tired And refused to Try and get rid of any of them There was a rodeo The night I was in Butterfield as well <laughs> <laughs> There was no animals used <laughs> Another Anya was in touch and she says, just listening to the podcast about minority sports, my sister, aunties and cousins are three in a row All-Ireland champions in rounders. A few of them even have all-stars in the sport. Never knew that was possible. They are from Glyn Barrentown in Wexford. Never Ra- heard of them. Rounders big down there, lad. Rounders, uh, heartland of, of the world, apparently, yeah. <laughs> Wexford. Actually, there's a few clubs in Wexford. Adamstown as well, they won a few All-Irelands in rounders. So I don't know what it is about those areas. They mustn't have much else going on to be putting their time in the rounders. All-stars in rounders. I tell you one thing, I'm going back into the rounders. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly, lad. Remember I was talking about on a yeah. previous podcast. He'd he, he probably get an All-star, all right, I'd say. Uh, unreal proud of them. They have a mixed team and a men's team too. So that's down there in Glyn Barrentown in Wexford. We'd be down for now few cans in the game of rounders, let's. Did you ever play rounders, Matt? Uh, only in primary school. Um, literally played every yeah. sport under the sun to try to get a few minutes outside. <laughs> so that was one of them. That's class. We're going to, right, we'll give the rounders a go. Connor on Instagram said, How are you lads? Listen to the podcast there. Noel had me in stitches. Just on the topic of trying different sports, badminton is class crack to watch. I was in the Olympics last time and I found it by mistake. Some Irish lad from Meath was competing. I think his name was Martin. But he was class, had a beer belly and was probably near 40, competing against these 20-something year old lean athletes. Beat this Swedish lad to get to the quarters, who was like second best in the world, but lost by a point, I think, in the quarters. Absolutely gutted for him. All the same, I think badminton would do well in Ireland. Any idea who that lad from Mead is, Mark? Uh, yeah, his name is Scott Evans, and I wouldn't say he has a beer belly. He's like Tyson Fury before a fight, you know. <laughs> 18 stone. <laughs> <laughs> No, a little bit of padding, but still fairly in good shape. Like. Yeah, but sure, if he's quick in his feet, like you don't need to be, you know, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. need to be fit when you got good hands. Yeah, more. he's not um, like Tony Soprano or something okay, like that. Yeah. You know? Your man hasn't built here as a fella who's like playing badminton with one hand, drinking <laughs> a can of Guinness in the other. Yeah. Like. He, was comp- he was competing at the Olympics. I think I watched yeah. one of his games. He's unreal. He's, yeah, yeah. he's class. Like. Yeah. Badminton, lad, I'll tell you, it's coming back. Uh, Sean on Instagram was saying, here, lad, I just listened to the newest podcast. Great job. On the topic of sports that are unusual and all that, I play a wee sport called canoe polo. Well, <laughs> there's actually a good few clubs in Ireland. That is that is a surprise. He plays for Ulster and a lot of money has been poured into it in the past few years. The game's really interesting. We're heading over to Tanland on Friday for a big competition. I'll send some videos and pictures on Snapchat if you want. Do. Do. <laughs> You look like you can't wait to watch it. I don't know how it works. Like, can, Well, they play polo and they're in yeah, canoes. How, I think they're in a swimming pool. Yeah, but you throw the ball in polo, no? Water polo, you throw no, the ball. No, it's... Do you know a horse polo? Yeah. Yeah, like croquet. Yeah, but they have yeah, canoes instead of horses. 
happens in a swimming pool. Oh, in the swimming <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> Only <laughs> Ireland. Um, Sophie was saying that she's loving that we're mad for rounders. Her mother has been stitches cooking the dinner. Said they're all big into rounders. Her nana was even a coach. And uh, growing up, all the grandkids would be given a bat and made to swing it around the field. <laughs> Sometimes two bats. <laughs> It'd make the one bat feel lighter when you hit it. Ah, oh, the old Babe Ruth trick, by it. Yeah. <laughs> While our parents were coaching the community games teams, my aunt was from the mines in Tip. Oh, Silver Mines, yeah. Yeah. Would have a, a team, and we'd have a team from Limerick. So there was always great rivalry at the Monsters. So if you're up for a game, we will get all the fam out and, and get the bag of metal bats and slitters and cans. <laughs> Don't mind your rackets. We'll provide a good source of content. <laughs> the way you read that, man, it sounds like you're talking about some fucking... <laughs> Some whole different game. <laughs> Let's go down the mines with some steel bats. <laughs> Get some good content. <laughs> One lad in Snapchat said, Lads, stay away from tug of war. I gave five years at it, won four All Irelands, but now I struggle to put my socks on in the morning. Body's wrecked. It'll fuck your knee up for all time. I'm 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 not planning on going tugging <laughs> tugging war anytime. Yeah, we'd love to be doing <laughs> <laughs> Without tug of war now. Tug of love. <laughs> We had a load of lads on saying tug of war is a cat. He just broke up after. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, God. Um, and on the, a lot, like people love tug of war. It's supposed to be a great crack, but also fair heart in the body. Did you ever try it, Matt? Uh, never tried it, but the actual world championships were on in New Ross uh, in my school grounds back, uh, back in the day. And I remember going to it thinking this would be a bit of crack. And you see these fully grown men in these massive boots. <laughs> yeah. And you should have seen the state of the pitch afterwards. It was like someone had got a play or just went straight through it. But my God, I don't know how the ropes break because those fellas are about 18, 19 stone. Yeah. It's unbelievable mm. to watch. So yeah. They're big lads. And if anyone checked out that care tug of our lads, <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll really enjoy it. Like, there's, there's one that actually, I looked at it again during the week. There's one lad pulling and he's got a fag in his mouth. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, lad. Do you lad. know him? No. no, no, no. I didn't know who he was. He, I'd say he was from New Inn. Okay, and uh, on uh, we were in Athlone and I, I was talking about the Romanian lad who plays the accordion. And a few people got in touch. This One woman said, uh, I work in Athlone. I go for a walk every lunch. And that Romanian lad is playing the exact same song over and over and over. And another person said, he doesn't even stop playing when there's a funeral and the, across the road at the church. Coffin being put into the hearse and he'd be playing when the saints go marching in. <laughs> Bit insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> you wanted to like go over and start like fucking playing with him and stuff. I had to pull him away. Um, so who's going to get the Nose News mug kindly sponsored by HairyBaby.com where you can buy loads of Two Johnny's merchandise. What do you think? Oh God. You're leaving it up to me. Uh, yeah. The, the, oh, the, I like the Romanian ones, but um, <laughs> ah, they get enough. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> You're not giving the cup to the Romanian lad playing like. Can, can we, lad? We go and present it to him. Yeah, I think you should give it to the lady who invited you down to play rounders. Uh, her aunt from the mines in Tipperary. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's okay. kind. She was kind enough now to invite you over. So. Yeah. So anyway. basically, now next week we'll be just. Blown away by the amount of invites we get to places. Um, yeah, they'll be all right. Okay, that woman's winning, Mara. You'll be in touch with her. Yep. She gets the Nose News mug. Lovely stuff. The weekly roundup. What's been going on in Two Johnny's Land this week? Um, a short week considering we're recording this podcast a little bit earlier than usual. Um, we've been busy, like, on the phone, emails, writing as well. Um, Monday, I had a completely mad day. I'm going to call it Monday Madness from now on, where I actually didn't get on with pajamas all day. Sat down and watched like random Went down a YouTube rabbit hole <laughs> You were like one of those slummy mummies just oh, <laughs> Yeah I, I was like, and, and full wool, wool pyjamas as well Like bottoms and tops The whole lot uh, I didn't even like the fire I was so late <laughs> well, we did, Like we Look, did a half day We worked the second half of the day yeah, And he well, just He kept going with the pyjamas buzz He called out And was like You may get a bit of work done I was like yeah Grind no bother yeah. Just sat there in the pyjamas all day did you have a tub of ice cream as well? No, I didn't actually because I'm, I'm trying to be good. But I was wrapped up in a blanket because it was so cold. I was like a burrito of sadness <laughs> <laughs> on Monday. So yeah, Monday was a Monday was a particularly tough day for me. Uh, we got a mention on Gift Grub. We did, which is of course Mario Rosenstock on today FM. Fair play, boy. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, he said Leo Radker couldn't do an interview because he was doing the Two Johnnies podcast. Proper so, order. Yeah, proper order, boy. Yeah, and Leo, if you're listening. Come on, anytime you want, lad. Um, by the time you'll have listened to this podcast, we'll have played the Trinity Ball and we'll have also brought the Get Loose Tour to Waterford. And um, as far as we know, the only show, yeah, the only show that's left with tickets is Carrick and Shannon. There's a few left for that, yeah. Yeah, so you can get them up. Next next weekend, we're in Kildare, Wexford, Kilkenny and Cork. And the main thing I did this week was I watched the first half of the um, Patrick Swayze movie Roadhouse. 
Have you seen that? Never seen it, no. Oh, okay. So, right, when this podcast is over, Matt, you need to go home, Fox. get on Netflix and watch Roadhouse. Patrick Swayze has a bit of a mullet and he goes around just baiting the fuck out of a load of rough <laughs> Americans. There's a full, out of the hour and a half a movie, I'd say there's a good hour of fight scenes. And then there's about 20 minutes of snappy one-liners. And then the other 10 minutes is riding. <laughs> so, you sold it to me. You oh, sold it to me. No, there's a bit where he does Tai Chi as well. But <laughs> like, oh, how did you leave that out? Man, he's just so cool. And then for the whole movie, they never you never get his first name. He's just, what's the name? Dalton. Wow. Dalton, like. Is he adding to the Daltons in care? I don't know. <laughs> They're good to scrap as well. <laughs> Well, he's the bouncer at this, at, it's like a big pub, and he's the bouncer, and he's on a ridiculous money. Your man comes up, and he's like, I want you to be my cooler, Dalton, and, and Patrick Swayze, he's like, $500 a night, no problem. I was like, fucking hell, lad, that's yeah. some twine for a bouncer. I'd nearly be a bouncer for that, lad. Huh? <laughs> 500 quid a night, go scrapping. But it's got, it, the movie's got everything. It's got um, the band in it, the house band are unreal, they're worth checking out. The guitar player is blind, and he plays the guitar um, flat like slide guitar. Plays, and I, oh, he's fucking savage. And um, yeah, you know, it's got everything. It's got fights, cars, tits, tunes. It's got everything. It's Saturday Night Nina, that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun for all the family. So check out Roadhouse. All right, topic number one. We decided to discuss cover bands after a Snapchat we got from County Waterford to alert us to a cover band called the Shellacabookies. Apparently, this is actually a cover band, not just what Noel Furlong called snails. So given Johnny B's experience of being in a cover band, yeah, take a shot if you're playing the drinking game. Uh, we want to debate what makes for a good night of musical entertainment, be it cover bands, wedding bands, or one-man bands. Yeah, okay, we're going to kick off wedding bands, right? It's a big industry in Ireland, um, and the first thing at a wedding, the first dance, do not play it off a CD player, MP3, phone, whatever. That's shit. Yeah. Get the band, play the first song, and pick something they can do. Because years ago when we were a four-piece, before we got the keyboards and all that, like... Uh, this is Johnny's old band now. This is me. Yeah. I was just drunk at all the weddings. There's four lads with long hair and beards. And like the day before the wedding, the bride's like, oh, for the first dance, can you do Ellie Goulding? No. <laughs> no. And then she insisted. So we had to do Ellie Goulding. I think, I think the problem there is like when, when you play it off a CD player, it's hard to get the atmosphere right. Like, so you want, mm. you want the live band to give it a bit of oomph and get everyone around in a circle for the first dance. And like I've been at weddings where they just press play and like Shania Twain comes on, it's just like, from the first moment I met you, I felt love. And everyone's just going, this is fucking weird. Now you're looking at your uncle and yeah. it's like, it just doesn't get the vibe right. Like, But that is a good song. Nonetheless, Shania Twain. Yeah, right. still the one. You got to get everybody up out of the seats mm -hmm. and around the edge of the dance floor. And this always worked. I did this at every wedding we ever did, apart from Cork. <laughs> Why? Cork people flat out refuse to get out of their seats. I've done weddings mm. all over and, you know, we'd do a toast to get everyone out of their seats and then once they were standing, I'd say, would you do us all a flavour? Do, do, do me a flavour. <laughs> <laughs> and take a step towards the dance floor. Mm. Then they'd take a bit and then I'd say, oh, people on the back, we're not starting without you, come on. And then you'd have everybody around the dance floor. Bride and groom would be introduced. Great start to the night. Yeah. Tried it in Cork 20 times. Nah. Not once. <laughs> Please out of your seats. Go ahead, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you play the band, I'll do the sitting. <laughs> I think the problem with wedding bands and, and, and even some pub bands is like, they come in with all the gear. The best gear you've ever seen. Like more gear than you too. There's a band that buys from Clamell with the big hair. They just come in with the lights. Oh, probably Mo Motley Crue job now. <laughs> yeah. They're inside in a small pub and it's like, you know, I want to rock. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They go over the top. But like they're, the one job of a wedding band is to get people dancing, and keep people dancing. That's your only job. That's your only job. That and eating chicken goujons at half time. <coughs> when you were in the band now, did you play a Rock the Boat? No, we never did Rock the Boat. A lot of places won't let you do Rock the Boat. Why? Oh, head and safety. Absolute oh. carnage. Rock, so it is. They won't let you do Rock the Boat? Yeah, some hotels won't let you Why? do it. What's the reason? What's the rationale? I don't know. I maybe like... It, rock the boat to me seems quite safe because you're already sitting down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The locomotion, that's dangerous. Yeah, there's like, lives at, at risk. I remember being at a wedding there in the chalk ice led the locomotion and it went the whole way across the dance floor, out through the smoking area, around the car park, back in <laughs> back in the front of the, the hotel and back into the function room. Is that not a conga line? 
Oh, well, we we used to do it to the locomotion. So like, you ever find don't play locomotion anymore? Good bands do, lad. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously you haven't. You haven't heard the bands I've been listening to. I do remember doing Rock the Boat at my dad's and trying to do that in the full ball gown was not the <laughs> easiest thing. Like trying to spread your legs so somebody could kind of sit in and then sort of like. That must have been a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Rock the Boat big in Wexford? Yeah, well, anybody I've been, I've been to, they've been doing it all right. You end up getting absolutely destroyed, though. Yeah. Usually the dance floor is covered in vodka rabine or whatever's been on, and you come up and your shirt is absolutely destroyed, and the mother giving it out to you, and you come home going, What were you doing? <laughs> doing Rock the Boat, man. <laughs> the tunnel. The tunnel, tunnel of love, lad. Yeah, we didn't do this. A lot of bands do that where they get everybody to make an arch with their hands, and the couple run through it. And then maybe they end back in the centre dance floor, or you end at the bar and do a shot. That's great. Like you do like hands touching hands and they make the tunnel way. Yeah, some crack. Go through it. And nothing, nothing usually happens at the end, which is fairly it's anticlimactical. <laughs> they get out and they're like, hey. No, in tip, they pick people up. Yeah. <laughs> up on the shoulders. It's like um, the birthday bumps. What's that like? The night's chair, isn't it? When they, yeah, 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 when yeah that's in. it. Yeah. What's that like? Where's like, Mahana? Oh, that's at a um, Jewish wedding, isn't Jewish it? Yeah, wedding. that's yeah. what it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, tip Jewish. You know, it's yeah. kind of. Like, <laughs> We're all, we're all the same, aren't we? Um, you don't want to burn people out, though, Johnny, in wedding bands, particularly. This is my thing. The, it's hard to explain, but, like, the dynamics of the night is real important. If the halftime break with the finger food didn't come at the right time, people would be wrecked. Yeah. Well, so once you have the first dance, you have everybody up, then you need to go start straight away into a couple of absolute winners, like songs that everyone knows, like, start off easy with, like, Brown Eyed Girl or something, then into a bit of jiving or whatever. But after about eight or ten songs... Like stop, mm. everyone's wrecked. We need a drink. <laughs> stop, just just for two or three minutes. Take a break. Let, let's get a, a slug, a sop, and then, you know, you gotta watch the crowd. If you're not getting them up, maybe try something different. If they're old, do a few waltzes or something, you know. But if the halftime break, some hotels, there was one hotel real fancy, and the finger food didn't come till twelve o'clock at night, and in the end, we just refused to play there. Yeah, it was that annoying. Where it was Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> But you did two hours done. Yeah, yeah. And then the finger food would come out and they'd be like, right, do a few more. I'm like, I it's the madness part of the night now. Like. Mm. When you're picking sets then, do you pick sets like with that in mind, right? I want them to go mental at like 12 o'clock, so I'll do Mr. Brightside. Yeah. You'd have to start the second half with like a same something that your mother would dance to. You'd have to start with like... Siege of Venice job. Ah, uh, no, I'll tell you now. Everyone has this great nostalgia for the Siege of Venice. I've never met anyone who could do it. <laughs> Like old people can do it And now I know how to do it From doing the weddings but Loads of people yeah. are at the wedding The bride is like Oh do the Siege of Venice And then they get it going And then it's just people Staring at each other Well where do you go Do I hold on to him yeah. Or what like I don't mind doing the Siege of Venice And I can do it But like I don't like When other people Don't do it right When it's not replicated Like one night I was at a wedding And I'd had a fight With this fella On the field oh, And yeah, we yeah. were dodging each other For a long long time <laughs> It was ongoing beef and then the Siege of Venice was going fine and then like, you know, you go under the arms and I went under the arms and looked up and just, oh. and he was standing right opposite me and there was another fella beside him. So it wasn't like I could swap and like, you know, wheel with the girl. So I came forward and had to wheel with this fella. <laughs> a fella who had threatened my life around three, three weeks previous, but it was all right. Yeah, it's all good now. Um, you know, we eventually <laughs> met friends after, but be careful with the Siege of Venice, you know, do it right. You know, buy a girl, buy a girl, don't be... <laughs> Commit to it if you're doing this. <laughs> it just reminds me of the field, you know, I'll dance with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, Spin your own I'll, nev I'll never forget it, yeah. I just went white. We used to finish with a couple of big numbers. Uh, we used to love doing, um, you know, you make me want a shot. Yeah. And we were doing it in care one night. Remember the shot guys is there? And I, I was going on with the mic and I'd have like, you know, hey, hey. And someone in the crowd would be like, hey, you know, back to you, over and back. And I did it to the shot guys with the mic. I was like, hey, hey. And he just went, <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely we'll definitely get other people up to singing in a while. Um yeah, you used to always finish with shout. Great scene of wedding crashers when they play a shout. And it just cuts to a montage of Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson just throwing women onto the bed. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's how it always ended for Johnny as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ever attempted to do the old old school fella, like you know, from the film old school, like start cursing. Do, and yeah, stuff. doing the first dance. Like we used to start slipping stuff in when we got bored, like, you know, um, uh, what's that song uh, from Dirty Dancing like? I've had the time of my life. No, the one that we used to make, do a medley of. Um, Hungry eyes. Anyway, it's like. Uh, Be my baby. <laughs> She's like the wind. 
<laughs> Why didn't New Shoes like the wind? Yeah. Oh, well, you should have. <laughs> Tipperary. No, um, do you love me? Okay, that's... And then it would come around and it'd be like, you know, um, whatever, the boys would start singing like, you know, show me your tits. And they'd start singing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lick that tit. And, <laughs> And, and like no one in the crowd would notice. <laughs> Nobody was in the crowd. Everyone was just dancing, like, you know. And, and, your face. and like no one would know the difference. So that's the oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. <laughs> pub bands then, they're a whole different breed. Yeah, we started out as a pub band. Yeah. At the wedding is just, just better money. <laughs> yes, less less yeah. hassle, not dealing with publicans. Yeah, it's true. Um, but a good pub band, you either have to be going mental mm. or else be classy and do something different, like. Have a bit of brass or have a lad like playing the organ or the fiddle or have an old angle, something different, you know? Yeah, I think most bands are probably too loud, Johnny. That's my big thing, I'm going to say it. Yeah. I've, I've, I've gone into pubs when there's a band on several times and I've gone up to them and said, boys, turn down. I don't give a fuck who you are. I know I'm not the manager, I'm a punter, but like, <laughs> you, you are blowing the head off me. I'm leaving if you don't turn down. Johnny's down there with his little uh, earplugs. Too loud, lads, <laughs> affecting my ears. Mostly the guitar players too. It's always guitar players. They can't be loud enough. Like they just turn it up like it's just me here. Like get the other four lads. Like <laughs> poor oh. drummer going mental. Yeah. In the back. I'd be at the other side of the stage, and every guitar player I always had was always too loud. Like he was too loud for me, and I was like five yards away. So I don't know how he heard that and bar himself. Yeah, it's a race to the top, though. Everyone just puts theirs up and up and up and <laughs> yeah. up and up, and then you're just blowing everyone's ears off. They play the first chord. The window just shatters <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Johnny, when you were in the pub band cover band. Getting people up to sing, I've seen this mm. in action. Mm. Um, is it something you were in favour of in your time? Because, you know, someone says, oh, let Sheila up to sing, like. Yeah. Sheila gets up there and she run rats <laughs> out of church, like. <laughs> I mean. But the way to do it, so is to, if somebody approaches you, like at a wedding, you talk to them at the start of the night and say, tell Sheila to come up at half time. Mm. And I'll see then, is Sheila Langer's now? I, I want to do Amy Winehouse. You know what I mean? It's like, no, Sheila, go home. Right? <laughs> You've had enough. Would but, you audition her, like? Simon Cowell job, you sitting down, like, you know, go on, sing for me there, Sheila. Uh, I'd have a chat with her now. And if you could ch- talk to her at half time and then start the second half with her. Because okay. if she was any good, it'd bring the house down. Yeah. Yeah, if one of their own was good to sing. Like one night, we, this lad came up and he was like an opera singer. And we were trying to do, we didn't know Atten that he wanted us to play. Time to say goodbye, is he? Yeah, no bother. That's in the wedding set. <laughs> we eventually agreed on Dancing in the Dark, Bruce Springsteen. But then he was like, you know, <laughs> I come home in the evening <laughs> <laughs> And my has got nothing to say How did that go now? Fucking like a Led Zeppelin <laughs> laugh <laughs> Nah, it was great You got some good characters up to sing in your time uh, yeah, I recall was... Sean Rowe and Tommy Reedy there in Urban's lad on a Sunday that was magical stuff Sean Rowe used to get up and do Richie Kavanagh and he could do both of the devices ah, yeah, like, it, was you know? free, it was almost freaky like Tell him the one about the fairies, you know. My mother was a fairy and my father was a wheelbarrow. You know, he get up to Richie Cabinet to a tea, like. Yeah, he and has it done. Um, Tommy Reedy, that mm. from Care, he had the biggest chest in Ireland, mm. the four foot chest. He used to get up and do all rat pack stuff. Yeah. And well, he, was he was a proper crooner, yeah. Mm. Very good, like. He was about 25, yeah. And he used to do sweet 16 as well. Melty knickers off and on it was. <laughs> Swear to God, like, he's a great voice. But that works well when you get someone who can sing. But I think. With, with pub bands, they have to do that little something different. Like your man from All Rights Reserved. <laughs> now, it was strange that he had his wife with him on stage at all times and she never done anything. I swear to God, they'd come <laughs> as a two-piece and he'd, he'd have a backing track and he'd play guitar and sometimes he'd play saxophone and he'd sing. Now, she'd be on stage too with a second mic. Not Never sang. She'd hold the saxophone and then like when it came to Baker Street, he'd just like take off the guitar and she'd hand him the sax and he'd go... And then he'd hand her back the sex and she'd just stand there with the sex again. <laughs> she stood on stage the whole time. Yeah. She was in the posters never. <laughs> <laughs> standing on stage. At least it was something different. And he used to have that like pipe thing that came out of the microphone. Vocoder. Yeah, and he used to do like, whoa, 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 whoa for like, on Yeah, it was, oh, God. Cool. it was cool. He done something different. Like, I don't know yeah. what kind of contraption it was. But I think the problem with pub bands is when you get in a really wild rebel band. Mm-hmm. You're going to be lucky, you know, to have any furniture left is the one thing. You want to be just ratcheting everything to the ground. Mm. Like, I, I, I've i seen proper full-on rebel bands. They're, they're great, like, and people drink mad, like, but yeah. if you're, you know, if you're the owner and you're saying, I'm going to gain a good rebel band, everyone will drink heavy. Better be prepared for a few thousand euros loss and damages as well. <laughs> the rebel bands, big down Wexford. 
had to be knocking around all right, yeah. yeah. Um, down in, down in Ramsgrange, you now the big getting the, down in Ramsgrange, going to Oxford now. Where the fuck is Ramsgrange? Ramsgrange, my locality. I tell you, there. I have a good story now about uh, the time we won the county final back in 2015, and local in Ramsgrange is called the Sportsman's, but it was it was under renovation at the time, and this is the biggest thing ever happened to Ramsgrange in probably history. So we won the senior football championship and everyone came down and the place was like in the middle of renovations there was wheelbarrows and shovels and spades and all around all, all in sight and we we're in there celebrating and there was a band in the corner and it, like it was down one side and there was a partition and then there was us down the back celebrating and then by the time the end of the night the, the man that was there had left all his gear there and we were up absolutely giving it socks for any song you can imagine one lad was going around in a, whe- a wheelbarrow <laughs> with the cup and one lad was hanging out of the, the, the ceiling it was absolute carnage I want to go out of here man. Uh, oh. it's changed now it's been upgraded it's not that, it's not that chaotic it's but, pure uh, classy now in Rams Grange uh, I don't know if you go that far but it's definitely improved alright <laughs> I think I think when we were talking Johnny when we got chatting on this cover band thing one of the big things that came up was like cover bands need to not be pricks I think guys get carried away. <laughs> because he's a general rule for yeah, life. No, but okay. partic- particularly in this cover band thing, because the thing okay. is, mm. they do a gig and like, you know, they sing, right, you sing, and then everyone sings like, so Sally came, and your man walks out or like, thinking he's class. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he's he's just singing Oasis song, yeah, like, you yeah. know, and it's people singing that back, like, and it, in fairness, some nights, lads and cover bands are on fire and, it, and it's brilliant. But like, don't be, di- like, Johnny had a drummer in for a while. Um, he thought he was in the fucking E Street band. One of, the, one of like our friends, Chaka, his brother, the, the Twix, he dropped a drop of drink on your man's cymbal one night on the drum. Mm. And like it looked class when he was playing it in, like the drink was popping up in the air. It looked deadly. <laughs> and he was proper sour about it. Like, wasn't he, John? He, he was, stopped and went like, somebody get me a towel. Yeah. <laughs> so he played a fucking song that's when he bit Budweiser it just reminds me of that scene in Step Brothers you know when Billy Joel is like no strictly 80s only yeah. not playing anything yeah. else what's on stage <laughs> strictly 80s Joel heck there's a band down our way uh, the glam band and they come in like head to oh, toe yeah. like Kiss and all the red hair and all like yeah. all full mm. glam and they only do 80s yeah and it's cool if you're a load of drunk like but if you come in for like one quiet point and they're all full makeup up on the tables <laughs> yeah. and all it's like, yeah. I am not ready for this got there fast yeah like some bands are class, like even, like there was a band who were in Irvins one day and Halley was so drunk he fell in and broke the mic stand. <laughs> and they were pure cool about it. Like, yeah, no, about that, whatever. Like, you know, cool one thing about that, a lot of singers in pub bands have not got their two front teeth knocked out. I have a load of cracks and chips in my two front teeth that you may notice from all the photos we put up, whatever. It's from people hitting your mic stand. Ow. Yeah. And the trick is you get one of those tube lights like people have at Christmas. And you run that along the front of the stage. Mm. So even if people are drunk, it kind of catches their eye and they look down. Aha, uh-huh. there you go. Oh. Learn something new every day. Yeah. yeah. When we're talking about bands, another thing that, that, that came to light was tribute acts. <laughs> Remember the Garrett Brooks lad? Ah, oh, lad. Didn't care. So like this was the time of the big Garrett Brooks furore, like, you know, and he hadn't, he'd cancelled Crow Park. So one of the pubs in towns decided to put on a Garrett Brooks tribute act. And in fairness, there was a hunger for it, mm. you know. So people were like, this is great. And I was like, grand, I'll go in here now. I'm not expecting much. Are you being a hardcore Garrett hardcore Brooks fan? Hardcore Garrett Brooks fan. I was at least expecting this lad to fucking look like Garrett Brooks. And I walked in and he had a t-shirt on. All right, Garrett Brooks, don't wear t-shirts. <laughs> he had a mic stand with a mic in it, right? He doesn't, Garrett Brooks has a, a headset. And this lad didn't even have a cowboy hat. <laughs> oh, no. He had like, I don't know, like a hunting hat, kind of flat. <laughs> Flat cap thing And I was just like Fuck that I left straight away Like he He obviously sounded Not like Garrett Brooks To go with it as well But that's the thing With tribute acts If you want to be A tribute act <laughs> Honestly I'm so, I'm so disappointed You can hear my voice Fuck That man is stealing a living <laughs> well, he is, he, It was like Garrett Brooks Like you know Live I was like Oh class Like went in Your man's like Yeah red strokes I was like I'm getting out of here Fuck He doesn't even look Like Garrett Brooks He's not even selling it to me If you're going to be A tribute act Commit to it I mean, if you're going to be Christy Moore, like, mm. you know. Sweat. Sweat, put on a few pounds, shave the head, you know, mm. be, it, be cantankerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, there's a man sitting across the other side of the room there who used to be in an Iron Maiden tribute band. And they went all out. If you remember, when your singer came out on stage, he even spoke in the English accent. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You have to commit to it. You have to give that feel. Like, if you go and see a Queen tribute act, Mm. In, in between songs Like what do you want boy <laughs> <laughs> This next one's called Radio Gaga <laughs> <laughs> Mama I just killed the lad <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah. All right, bye song. <laughs> <laughs> Next song. Brian May, I hate it there, kid. Do you know what I mean? I want to break free. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work. Like, you have to commit to it, man. You have to fully commit to it. Um, we heard a great one, though, about, like, um, just talking about hats while we're talking about Stetsons. Oh, yeah, we can tell that, yeah. Yeah, go on, tell that, yeah. So there's a lad who, who tours on the country scene called T.R. Dallas. So it's probably name, his name's probably Tom Ryan or something, but whatever. He goes as That T- is his name. <laughs> his name is, his surname is Alan because he is the brother of either Foster or Alan. Ah. Is he Tom Allen, I think? Tom Allen, yeah. Yes. So, so he goes as T.R. Dallas mm. and he always wears this, it's a proper cowboy hat now. And yeah. he does this trick, you know, where he can bobble his head side to side and the hat won't fall off. It's like the hat rocks opposite to how his head rocks. So when he's playing, he can bobble over and back and uh, it stays on his head. And then when he came to do a gig in Casha, the hat is like in a hard case, a flight case, like it's an expensive guitar or something because he needs the hat. But sure, long story short, if you got the hat, and they were like, no bother to your, we'll get you a hat. So he came back with his pound shop, York, and here, right? It's past, <laughs> you know, he came, he came with a cap gun. And a sheriff badge. <laughs> <laughs> and a fucking sheriff badge on the front of the cowboy, yeah. <laughs> so he's playing inside and brew room casual. And he's, he's playing away, you know, whatever. And he goes to do the trick, Bob and head, and the hat goes flying off the side of him, <laughs> bang, straight off the ground. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay, we're going to finish the band section in with one man bands, Johnny. They're the they're the they're the big one on the scene now. Yeah, one man bands. It's just a price to like harder and harder to get actual bands into pubs. People just want one man with the acoustic guitar. Yeah, it's handy. It's easy to manage. Easy to set up. Get in and get out. And it don't take up as much space as a four piece. If you're trying to make money drinking, you put him in the corner. Yeah. and you get more people in. What's revolutionised it has the old stamp box, the foot yeah. pedal that does the old drum. Yeah. Ever since Mum from the Tons came along, they brought back the one. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? Mm. There's um there's some great one man bands around us. There's one particular fella called Willie Bunn, mm. who like kind of does like DJ singing and fucking fancy dress, I guess, rolled into one. And I remember going to the 21st <laughs> and I was like, oh, have you abandoned? He was like, nah, man, have Willie Bunn. It's like, wow, this is going to be crazy. Like, what does this guy do? He's like, now nah, wait and see. And next thing, like, it just starts, YMCA. Willie himself was a full Indian. <laughs> And just start dancing with old ones, like, and then he'd pull the mic out and just sing over it, like, and then he'd disappear. And we're like, we seen him one night when we were starting, and um, we were doing like uh, Stars and Rise or something local, anyway, and we were hosting it. And then, like, we went down to Willie, and he was like, just dressed normally. And then, like, we went back to him after half time, and he was fully dressed as Elton John. Oh, God. <laughs> and he got up and done a full Elton John song, like, just for the crack. Just for the mm-hmm. crack. He's, he's a great entertainer. Yeah, a friend of mine, um, when she got married, like, the only job she gave to the groom was book the one man band for the afters of the wedding the following day. Oh. Sounds manageable. <laughs> Woke up the next day after the wedding, great morning. She goes to him, So who did you book? And he looks at her blankly, Oh shit. So when like he's like, Don't worry, book someone, he booked someone. And uh, in fairness, your man was really good, but he just wasn't suitable for the afters of a wedding. He started playing um like everybody hanging, and then next thing he's playing, the drugs don't work. And then he's just like, <laughs> Oh god. <Shit. laughs> yeah. That's that's the thing though, but that whole that one man bang can be dangerous because karaoke's dangerous. Anybody who books karaoke lads take their life into their own hands. Like it's it's crazy. You'll have fucking screaming and all lads who think they're class. And you then. used to love karaoke, lad. Yeah, yeah, but like <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I used to do like Come Together by the Beatles was, was one of my karaoke hits. Was it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Don't know why like. I think Holly oh. Moore's done it years ago or something like that. When we were getting going, uh, I've been playing in bands like since like fourteen or whatever, and we had this gig Somehow our guitar player's dad was in a band and he got us this gig in Killing All <laughs> in, in Tipperary, right? Little village. And we're in there and fuck it, we're only 15, like shit gear, a load of lads with undercuts and long hair and black hoodies, you know, and all. And we're playing, like we're doing the best we can. We're all into like metal and punk. So the best, we kind of, happy meeting. We were playing like Tin Lizzy and mm. we're going away okay. And then we finished and they were like, oh, it's Tom Joe's birthday. You'd have to do a song for Tom Jaw. He's a regular, like. And we were like, fuck, we're playing all the songs we know. And we're like, and then someone was like, oh, yeah, we got one more. One more. Oh, yeah, we know that one. Okay, we'll play that one. And then we seen Tom Jaw, and he was his 75th birthday. And we're like, this one's for Tom Jaw. <laughs> oh, no. Metallica, Seek and Destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Tom Jaw. <laughs> Did the full seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Joe sitting on the back Evil eye on us Tom Joe just switched off The hearing aids <laughs> <laughs> Shit and he, and, he, 
<laughs> Unusual ones down your way, Manny. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, not really, no. Like, I suppose karaoke the most annoying yeah, one is the one, the one that... What's your song? Actually, my song, yeah. God, I, I steer clear of that now. <laughs> when you get to when you get to that stage, my mother is the first one up. It's either that or dancing. I'm there down the back, just hiding, making sure she doesn't see me because next thing I'll be dragged up with it. But the worst is when someone thinks they're class. Yeah, that's the problem. And everybody else is just biting their lip, going, "Will they ever finish?" And yeah. the next thing, drop again and again and again. That's but then on the one man van thing, actually, down in Rams Grange, and Rams Grange is gonna get a bad old rap now. But <laughs> ah, it's my locality. It's a great place. But there's this place we it's uh, it's called the local, a uh, nice little bar, and they started doing brunch. But then, uh, I don't know. Fucking brunch. No, <laughs> brunch in the, in the middle of the countryside in Wexford. And it was like, that. you'd be doing well to get a lot of people down there anyway. But then to make it something something different, they added a jazz brunch. So I went down to it once. <laughs> yeah. Stop oh, I, I, this is This is 100% true. I went down there once with my sister. just to check it out anyway. And we're like, yeah, just grand. Yeah, you had your standard poached eggs or whatever. And I was like, this is nice. Then next thing out of nowhere, this lad on a, on a saxophone just starts coming in around the table. So I'm like, just getting uncomfortably close. And I'm like... God, this is one of the strangest experiences of brunch I've ever had. Now. So I don't know if it's still going. Maybe it's successful for him. I, I don't know now. It's, it's something different at least. What that place needs is that fella from Athlone on the screen box. <laughs> 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 Jazz, look, get yourself down to the Rams Grange, lads. Jazz brunch. Yeah, give me your verdict on it. I don't know. Okay, listeners, going... listeners of the podcast, we're going to finish up with, uh, with cover bands. Well, uh, I just have one. We had a drummer in the cover band and he actually became a born again Christian. All right. And then he refused to play ACDC Highway to Hell. No way. Yeah. So oh. our compromise was he had to learn the drum solo from Black Betty okay. instead. Yeah. Okay. Which took him like a whole week. <laughs> so he tortured him basically. Yeah. No, no wonder he's and not in the band anymore. A mate of ours called him. He, he's a big dad, but great crack. But a uh, good country man. But he loves the doors. And he'd been out all day and he was meeting the new girlfriend's family for the first time over in the Abbey Tavern in Care. <laughs> but he said whatever, they went out early during the day and he was loaded now by this time and he arrives into the pub anyway. and there's a two-piece band playing the Cotters, you know, and they saw him and they're like, oh, you'll do a song, you know, and he said I'd normally do the Transit Van Seamus Moore, you know but he'd been watching the Doors documentary that morning like, <laughs> and he was full of drinks so he got in and he just kind of fell, fell about the place and he got up and grabbed the microphone and just shouted, You're all a bunch of fucking slaves! <laughs> oh my God. Sitting in the lounge of the Abbey Tavern in care. <laughs> and the girlfriend's parents there. Oh, Are they still together? Yeah, they're, yeah, oh, they're right. married. They're married now, yeah. There you go. <laughs> obviously went all right. They're obviously fans of the doors as well. Right, <laughs> listeners of the podcast, let us know the crazy experience you've had with pub bands or wedding bands. Let us know your funny stories. Get in touch with us here at Two Johnny's Podcast. Okay, this man is not a fan of short puckouts, the Kardashians, or third world dictators. It's time for Noel Furlong, and it's time for Noel's News. Noel's News! It's Noel's News! How are you for that? Well, Noel, how are you? Once again, slightly hungover. Uh, yeah. Uh, Where were you last night? Oh, well... Yeah, we're here in Dublin and I was actually up for a bit of a do anyway, we'll, I'll tell you about that later. Okay, okay, all right. But um, you've been by the Hanlins with you today. Yeah, yeah, that's Matt there. And he, liked, he liked the fan, all right, indeed. <laughs> bit more hair than him. A bit more hair than the fan, yeah. You over Rams Grange? Yeah, that's right. Mm. I heard your father was the Ram. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't told about that now, but it could be true. <laughs> Where do you think you came out of here? Fucking <laughs> 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 Easter egg, was it? You came out in the middle of it? No. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> They're not shy down there, I'll tell you that now. Fuck. Jazz brunch. <laughs> Jazz brunch, lad, yeah. That's the new thing, yeah. Fucking hell, what's that? Tomatoes and stuff, is it? No. <laughs> poached eggs. Fucking hell, I used to poach eggs, poach fucking rabbits, yeah, I used to poach, <laughs> poach deer, poach fucking that, and it was gone by. <laughs> but, um,. Now, a bit of news for you, right? Okay. Like the song says, where the climate is raw and the gun makes the law. Mallow. <laughs> <laughs> no, Van Diemen's Land. Okay? You know that expression, Van Diemen's Land? Uh, yeah. Where does that apply to? Don't say Carlo. Where does it apply to? Tasmania? I was about to say Holland. <laughs> 
yeah. What, were, you, were you actually? I knew I heard it like in songs and stuff, but I had never actually. You're always singing back home in Derry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Van Diemen Land. Yeah, yeah. No, the fucking Australian Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> the lad who discovered Tasmania, right? Now, when I say discovered, obviously there was hip fucking lads already living there, but the first white European man who claims he discovered, his name was Abel Tasman. You thought I was going to say Jimmy Buckley, didn't you? Yeah. No, no, he discovered Claire. So Tasman named the island Antungen van Diemenslat. Catchy name. <laughs> that was after Anthony van Diemen, who was, well, the man, he was over the Dutch East Indies. He was the governor there. And that's why it was called Van Diemen's Land, because fellas couldn't pronounce the full name. Do you know, like, when tourists come to Ireland and they can't pronounce Clamel, so they just say Kip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. So then, then in <laughs> 1856, before my time, they officially named it Tasmania after your man. But our story is a hop, skip and jump in Australia. Good I mate, as they say. Now, the Aussies, as I call them, they, they, they love meat, okay? This is the big thing there. If it moves, they'll barbecue it, right? We thought Rams Grange was raw now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, kangaroo, possum, squirrel, small child, you just <laughs> fuck it. You put enough barbecue sauce on it, they'll eat it. Do you remember that story that was going around? Oh, dingo at my baby. Did we hear that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it? Did it really? Uh, they ate that child. <laughs> Think it did. Pack his disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't, don't, well, don't be the child. I'm telling you, lads, you're a few pints in. You know what I mean? It's a hot day. <laughs> Se- session, I mean, the session is good. A big inquest. They find that, yeah, the, the baby was taken by dinkos. Well, when in Rome. <laughs> what? Now, they're, now they've gone... The total or direction. So there's people out there protesting saying, don't eat meat. Okay. Mm. And they call themselves veg an V E G A N. I'd say that's I'd say that's vegan. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I never heard them before. <laughs> but these people, they say they don't eat meat. That can't be right. <laughs> no, that's true. They don't eat meat at all. Don't eat any animal products. And are they still able to I would imagine so. Yeah. You know, but uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> raise the ball, soldier. Yeah. They, you know, what if you were, you know, you want a little bit of red meat for the bit of, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a little bit of grunt. You know, what if you were in the bedroom and like, and you had to slip the clutch? You know, if you had to, <laughs> you know, if you were changing the drill from screw to hammer action, you'd want to. <laughs> You want to be the meat. You want to be the... Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we do know. Yeah. We do know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're just like... Uh, riding, just in case you... <laughs> <laughs> if I put that across clearly. But um, <laughs> so there's a town in Australia called Melbourne. And there were a lot of the vegan lads protesting about eating animals and the treatment of animals. So they blocked the whole main road in Melbourne. They sat down in the middle of the road... And they said, we're not moving. We're not going nowhere. Protesting. Now, Geraldine tried that once with me. She said, Daddy, I'm not going to Mass. From the small time. She said, I'm not going to Mass. Sitting here on the couch. And I said, how dare you? Be that disrespectful to God. We have to go to Mass. And she said, why, Daddy? Why do we have to go to Mass? And I said, you have to go to Mass. So that when we come home, you can tell Mammy which priest said Mass and I can get away with being the Pope. <laughs> okay? But you have to treat animals well. Okay? Because, I'll tell you, they're giving out to the farmers, but nobody treats animals better than farmers. That's true, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. When we first got married now, myself and ourselves, and we had no money, there was no money to be got. And once we had a sick calf, and you couldn't afford to lose a sick calf. Mm. And the calf was so sick, I'd let the calf sleep in the bed. <laughs> That's fact. Jeez. Yeah, Carmel was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the bed with the cat. You know? When in Rome. 
<laughs> so that's, that's Australia. Big protest going on. But the Taoiseach of Australia, he came out and said, is un-Australian, like culture. Or thing. He said, so un-Australian. He said he's protest. So they're always giving out. Right? Fucking Australia. My mother's older than Australia. So now up next, Belgium. And I know what you're thinking. Who gives a shit? It's only, it's only Belgium, right? Uh, a couple of things on Belgium before you get into it. Did you know Belgium is the world's biggest exporter of chocolate? Mm. Which is important to some people. Mm. Do you like chocolate? I do. I love chocolate, yeah. Would you eat chocolate? No, I can't. <clears throat> get migrants. It was well off. Mm, I, I don't eat it. No? <laughs> Why? I, I don't need chocolate. Why? Dangerous. It's not, not right. An uncle of mine ate chocolate once. And when he woke up the next day, he had turned into an Australian. <laughs> How is that even possible? That's a fact. Yeah. Definitely not a fact. That is a fact. What brand of chocolate was it? I don't know. I didn't ask. Oh, okay. But I knew he was Australian because he had a mullet. <laughs> and he knew all the lyrics to the 1986 chart topping hit Your Device oh. by John Farnham. That's a fact. <laughs> um, Jean Claude Van Damme, also from Belgium, he apparently is an actor. Yeah. He's about as much an actor now as Nathan Carter is a singer. <laughs> okay. oh. Just because you're in a film, don't make you an actor. You know what I mean? I saw Cameron in the garage, don't make her a mechanic. <laughs> you know what I mean? One day I asked her to move the wheelbarrow. Nine men died. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're not even local. Uh, it's it's fine. Okay, so. Yeah, we're just saying. Now, so in Belgium, there was these twin brothers, okay? Both male, and they were arrested for a fight, okay? Ibrahim and Marat, both aged 28. These two brothers, the same age. Peter Hockey, huh? But they were cycling down the street... And one lad fell off his bike and there was a lad drinking tea and he started laughing at him. Ha, you fucking clown, fell off the bike. So your man got up off the ground and he started a row. And the other brother tried to hold him back, which must be a Belgian thing, <laughs> holding people back from a fight. So the cops came and they wanted to press charges, but they couldn't tell the two brothers apart. Didn't know which of them was which, because they were identical twins. Would you believe it? Yes. I never saw identical twins. No way. Yeah, did you? There's, there's identical twins in, in care. I never saw them. <laughs> twins? No, no, like when I was young, there was the Norris twins, Frank and Joe. <laughs> no, like, Frank was a good bit older than Joe. But they, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But they, they were fair alike. But you wouldn't call them identical. You know what I mean? One of them was a good bit taller than the other, you'd know them. So... The man who was assaulted, he couldn't even be sure which of the brothers attacked him. Okay. Two of them the fucking head off each other. And the CCT footage was saying they couldn't rely on it. And the two lads refused to admit it. So it looks like they can't be charged. Okay. They're going to get away with it. But they have this new thing going now. They're going to do a test to tell the two brothers apart. And they're going to use DNA to tell the twins apart. The scientists say... We all have DNA inside us. I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I think science would disagree with that, Noel. Well, if there was DNA inside me, I'd know about it. <laughs> <laughs> like I always say, when in Rome. <laughs> Does make any sense? When in Rome, bye. So, just to say, best of luck to the Belgians and all the scientists around the world. And we hope they find a cure for Mike Denver's hair. <laughs> <laughs> we ask God, yeah, we ask God to cure him of his terrible affliction. <laughs> Sorry, the fucking thing is ringing here now. Hang on, give me a sec. Hello? Hello? No, I'm at not and talk away. <laughs> well, how were you after last night? Some fucking portal drank, wasn't it? Because when last I saw you, you were eating chips out of a nurse's handbag. <laughs> Dipping every second morning, Jameson, you fucking animal. 
no, it was grand. Like, it started out as a lovely evening. I, we were inside in Cavernous and Michael Lowry brought us a drink. And <laughs> then, then you were, you were at that young one up on the fucking pool table. <laughs> After 10 or 15 minutes, I had to go out. <laughs> I couldn't hear the fucking match. Her roar. <laughs> no, I could have done without seeing that, to be honest. With the, <laughs> the fucking physique of a cherry trifle, you know. You were barred for life. Again. Um, and then we went into Devitt's. Um, I ordered two hot whiskeys. Nice. Um, <laughs> Pat Kenny was doing the DJ set. And yeah, good night now. We done rock the boat. We done drop the boot. <laughs> and then we finished with empty the trailer. <laughs> yeah. You did? Yeah. You got up and did your usual party piece. Your favourite song. The smell coming out of was coming. <laughs> 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 and then uh, what else did you do? You did you did you sang a lovely version of um, the prodigy "Smack My Bitch Up." <laughs> Actually, didn't go down as well as you'd expect. <laughs> didn't go down as well as you think. Remember you got us thrown out in you fucking animal. You were trying to buy a dog off Aladdin the Bear Garden, <laughs> and you didn't have cash, and he didn't accept lemons. So <laughs> it was the end of that. Yeah, you've been kind of around your pocket all night and hot whiskeys, but sure, I know as you say yourself. One in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> no, jeez, it was the best fucking fight I've seen now since that whole Tom Cruise, Mary Black thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm fucking dying. How are you? You're back to life, yeah? My fucking headphones are falling off me. No, no way I'm going out again tonight. <laughs> fucking, no, last time I got drinking with you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you again. <laughs> are you are you going out here? Yeah? You're not working? Or the false spies are covering you. <laughs> I didn't know they could do that. Okay, go on, I'll go for a few. We're staying on pints now. Yeah. No, we're staying on pints. I can't fucking keep up with you anymore, you animal. Go on. Yeah, go on, okay. I'll be, I'll be out there now in a minute, okay. All right, good look, good look, good look, look. Who, who, who was that? Father Dwyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just gonna, I'm gonna go for a pint with him. Uh, Are you going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you see that phone number there? Yeah. You just just ring Carmel and tell her I've been in a serious accident. Okay. How how serious? But uh, no, no, I'll be back by Monday. Okay. Okay. Go so, on. Go see on. you next and, week. Uh, uh, tell the ram I was asking for. Him. I will, I will. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> now. She's fresh off the digger from her latest ATM robbery. Mara, what have you got for us for your mystery topic this week? Uh, right, uh, Matt, apologies for this in advance, but anyway. Oh, shit. Um, oh, great. <laughs> right, I was chatting to you last weekend about this film uh, from 2012 called The Vow, uh, starring Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams. Have any of you seen it? Oh, Okay, no, well, no. there is a scene in it that I find a little bit upsetting and, yeah, fascinating. Basically, early on in the film, Channing Tatum farts in the car and Rachel McAdams looks up at him and smiles with almost like kind of a sexy look in her face and then she rolls up the window <laughs> and he says that's so twisted but so romantic and they have a smile and have a Fucked moment um, now apparently the executive producer wanted to cut that scene because he wasn't sure if the humour would translate to the audience but when the film was tested uh, with uh, like an actual studio audience they loved the scene as their favourite part of the film now, I think that was just like, Ugh. like I don't care if it's Channing Tatum farting, I still wouldn't be breathing that air. So I'm just wondering, if this were to happen in real life, you were with a one in the car, would you be kind of disgusted or flattered that she was smelling whatever? And if you had to let one go, uh. <laughs> how would you handle it? <laughs> Discreetly <laughs> And yeah If she was like Oh I love this man of farts I'd be pulling over <laughs> You can get out and walk <laughs> Who are you taking me shit <laughs> but, uh, There's no way Someone would enjoy his farts Having travelled in the car <laughs> He's on this new protein diet now It's, 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 it's a killer He let one today I was like honestly I'm not travelling with you anymore <laughs> All separate <laughs> So you were saying like when Almost when is it acceptable To fart in front of like, Yeah like there is that that period, like you know, when you're first with them, like you oh, know, I, I don't fart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, my my shit smells of roses, and like literally, like I've been there, and I've been like holding like a fart for like twelve <laughs> hours, and they're literally like, I'm gonna head away now, and you be like, yeah, I'll see you, and then the door closes, you just go, because <laughs> 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 like, but then after you're waiting for a while, like you'd be kind of just farting, like, and then just like you know, 
letting up the cover and like shoving her head down. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, I want to tell you something. I think, think, think they call that a Dutch oven. <laughs> yeah, you, you can look that up. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. You can, you can, <laughs> but don't. No, Channing Tatum, fuck that shit. Roll down the window and like, you know, be as discreet as you can. Maybe like, mm. give it the old one-legged lift. You know what I mean? Yeah, or else just be like, <laughs> ninja. Oh, I'd say if someone's spreading a slurry around here. <laughs> That's it. Get, yeah. get, get the excuse and yeah. go early before any questions can be asked. That's the way to do it. How long does it take before you fart in front of a lad more? I just wouldn't. Yeah. Er... I'd say you nearly shit yourself though the night you robbed the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I think definitely let down the window. Don't be breathing that yeah. stuff in, you know. Yeah. Um, That's kind of, that's kind of sick. Yeah. yeah. Dodgy yeah. pass. Yeah. To be going down. That is yeah. sick. Like, yeah. what? If she's into that, what other kind of shit she's into? Yeah. Johnny? I'm scared, lad. No? Oh, I... You watched the theme film. I was like, this is supposed to be a romantic, romantic comedy. And it was like... So where are they driving to? Do they then go and like well, chop had... up small children or something? No, they're like mm-hmm. driving around Chicago and it's a really romantic scene. And she has her head out the window and... She, she had her head out the window? Yeah, and she was just like driving along. The wind was in her hair and then she kind of leans back in again. And Channing does this weird face that's like... Oh no, I've just let one go. And then she goes, Did you just fart? And he's like, mm. And then she puts up the window and he's like, That's so twisted, but romantic. So I don't know. That's Americans for you. Channing, lads. He left it. He he's gone down on my estimation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> going to have to get himself assessed. Uh, it's never right, Maura, to answer your question. It's never right to fart in front of him. Unless you're together at least over two years, you know, it probably becomes acceptable then. Yeah, I think the only way you could get away with it is if, like, you're married and it's like, too late now, buddy. You but, know? Yeah. But, like, that's, I, I think that's what it is. At the start, it's all romantic and lovely. And then, like, you know, you get married and, like, she's shaving her legs and you're taking a shite at the same time. It's <laughs> <laughs> basically how it goes. Yeah. If anybody has any funny stories out there, let us know, lads, about, like, your other half letting one fucking rip on you. <laughs> we'll move on from that. Sick shit. <laughs> Don't forget to rate, review, and tell your friends about the Two Johnny's podcast and use the hashtag Two Johnny's Pod to spread the good word. And leave us a review as well on iTunes and give us your future topics. Look, this podcast is for all of you. Yeah, leave us a review now. Come on. Yeah, do. And, and a good one at that. Don't leave us a bad one. Don't be mm. bad. Okay, so uh, given the presence of our special guest, Matt, do you like to be called Matt or Matthew? I go by Matt, generally... Mainly because most people in Wexford can't pronounce their THs. <laughs> <laughs> Matt who? <laughs> yeah, the jokes in primary school, Matt you. Ah, yeah, no, it gets no, all so that. I just stuck to Matt. That is uh, Matthew O'Hanlon. <laughs> we have decided to go through our thoughts on how to be the perfect gentleman. Yeah. And I, now we've been using this um, website, Lifehack, and has given us the following timeless tips on how to be a gentleman that will enhance your life, both personally and professionally. Good stuff, we think. Yeah, it seems pretty legit. You know, there's not a whole pile <clears throat> Seth and Johnny B know about being a gentleman. So we've, we're going to borrow some of Matt's credibility. Who is the, the probably the most gentleman man we know. So. Wow. Yeah. Thanks very Thanks. much. Yeah. Like, you're building yeah. me up there for yeah. a fall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want much of a fucking list now, like, to be fair. <laughs> okay, so on number one on the list here is um, define your personal style. Now, this is a big one in Ireland because if people have any bit of unusual style, they tend to be absolutely slated by all the lads down the pub. And I want to draw particular attention to Johnny Smacks, who has this thing about socks. And that's kind of Johnny's style, that he wears the little invisible socks. Yeah, ankles out was something we started around two years ago, saying like ankles out and wearing. Mm. And the amount, of people, the amount of people who just cannot get past it. Yeah. It's like Smacks could stab somebody in the face and they'd be like, no socks to break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the thing about Ireland in general and when, and when it comes to men's fashion is like, I have socks on. Yeah. I, I feel like I should nearly release a statement on this. Yeah. I have socks on. They're little invisy socks, you know, pop socks, uh, whatever you want to call them. And they can't be seen low to cut. the naked eye. They're low cut. But I do have socks on, rest assured. And it's just, you know, it's a look. Like I wore a suit and I would look stupid if I had suits with big, dirty, umbro socks on or something. Big baggy you, socks hanging out the side of them. You had real tight pants in a suit and low little loafers. Yeah, low cut loafers then. like So, you know, it's a style. Now, Matt has the ankles out. I yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, so do I, wait. Yeah. There you go. So. I, I'm just fond of socks. But this, people go mental over this. But like, if you went down to Rams Grange now, wearing something a bit out of the ordinary, man, like, would people, lads be onto you? Oh, 100%, yeah. Why you rocked up the train and now wearing something a bit out there, the lads would be first to say it to me. But I don't know, I think the way it is, I've been living in Dublin, so, and the way it is, you'd see 
I suppose the cutting edge of style up here where you'd see people trying different things and then it'll take three or four years before it makes it down to Rams Grange yeah. so <laughs> you know I came down there with a pair of skinny jeans a few years ago and lads were giving me abuse but uh, now look at them they're all wearing skinny jeans uh, you know it's it's it comes around and it swings around about roundabouts but you kind of got to go through that period at the start where you're going to get a bit of slagging yeah. then yeah. they'll eventually come around I think I think Irish, <clears throat> Irish men don't express themselves enough in in how they dress like yeah lads can be very afraid to try anything different going down the pub ah, they're shitting themselves you, same people sitting in the same spots every week and to try something different yeah blow so, their mind yeah like particularly style wise if you look back over the years Irish men were stylish wearing suits all well put together mm. hair was looked after obviously went through the phase then in the 60s, 70s when we were all hippies lads were letting themselves go a bit you know that kind of stuff the sideburns yeah 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 big chops they were, they were never cool you know <laughs> but even in Carlo <laughs> previous generations I see all, all in the workshop at home with Hurleys all the photos of my grandfather even making Hurleys he was still wearing shirt mm. tie suit jacket every photo of Michael Collins and all them boys the whole revolutionaries yeah. all wore caps double breasted suits yeah. looked mm. well and I don't know why it's become a thing in Ireland that don't do anything out of the ordinary. Like, yeah. people just cannot get over Smax's ankles. And, like, the night we were on the late eight, there was people on Twitter going <laughs> yeah. absolutely mental. And, like, one of the guys who came out for Blind Date, mm. he had the skinny jeans, blazer, and, like, the invisible socks on. And there was people actually tweeting, using the see you next Tuesday word about mm. these lads, generation pricks. People were going freaking out. And I thought, no. This is you being closed minded yeah. over an item of clothing and judging a book by its cover. And that is not the act of a gentleman. Agreed, agreed. God, you have to you have to express yourself. That's the way it is. Yeah. Irish men, like I like Matt's style. That's why he's here today. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing him wearing a jacket, like this denim jacket one day, and I remember saying to Johnny, like, that's class. And then the next night we went out, I had the denim jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know also it felt a bit weird today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry lad I'm Now he's gone to the stage Where he's sending me pictures Of himself going What do I wear Do I wear the black shirt Do I wear the white shirt I'm not, I should be a style consultant I reckon We're going to We're going to do tonight And I text Johnny And I was like I tried on I got this new suit yesterday For it Like Because we have to That's the thing We have to keep changing the suits now Because like once we put up a photo We can't wear them twice Like yeah, yeah. I know we do But like Just try and space them apart Yeah yeah So we, we got new suits yesterday And I got like a white shirt And a black shirt Didn't know which one to wear So I text Johnny And I was like Black shirt or white shirt? He's like, just text Matt. No, just text Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt I, I'm yeah, but that, that's black. totally cool between, yeah. men. you know. Modern men. Modern heads. Girls section. do it all the time. Oh, yeah. you know? there, there's you nothing go. worse than like, oh, we're going out tonight. And then you get the text about seven o'clock. What are you wearing out tonight? And it's like, if you go with, back with something vague, like just jeans and a top, it's Je like. Oh, that's like the state. Women, what are you wearing? Like, jeans and a nice top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. but women probably want to know, like, are we all wearing dresses, high heels, you know, eyelash extensions yeah. and all they want to know if you're going hard or not yeah but I hate that I just like yeah but lads are getting it. into that too lads are doing it yeah yeah if we were going out in Dublin he'd be like are we wearing shirts like where are we going or what kind of place are we going yeah. are you, you know are you wearing a blazer are you wearing a t-shirt what are you doing yeah that's the thing how jazzy are you going because you don't want to be the only guy in the group like who wore runners or something and then we go to somewhere fancy and they're like oh no yeah you're not getting in um, point number two in being the perfect gentleman is keep your hygiene in check clean showered and groomed this is vital. Mm -hmm. Irish men ignore. Like, <clears throat> and as time changes, that, that changes as well. In that, like, back there, years years ago, it used to be acceptable to play a match, put on a bit of links, and then go out. Not yeah. acceptable nowadays. Times have changed. Anyone doing that in your dressing room, no? <laughs> <laughs> no one I can name anyone. Anyway, put it that way. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that's definitely changed. Even if you look at barbers now, everyone's getting yeah. their hair every two weeks. Yeah. You know, where before you get it when it was getting too long. Man, but no, now no. it's like... Four days. Four days. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, what are you up to now? That's one extreme now. Once a week. Once a week. Every week, yeah. Once a week, every week. Um, yeah. but because you, you've got the fresh fade. Yeah, but that's the way things have gone as well. And it's being groomed. Like, as a woman now, Mara, you know, you want a man who's obviously clean and hygienic, first mm. of all. But then you also want someone who's like groomed. Now, not groomed within an inch of their life. There's a fine line between, you know, I'm looking well and I'm part of the only way is Essex. Yeah. But like... Groomed, nice, you know, beard, well groomed, well looked after. Like, is that that surely is what women are looking for? But then, what about the rugged bit? You know, where's oh, yeah. the? Well, there's one person that I've seen that has um that had kind of like how would you describe it? It's kind of like the landing stripped, but like shaved into their like, but up to their belly button. There was like this line of hair, <laughs> and it was like, God, that's 
A man. Yeah. Who purposely shaved like this. Yeah. Oh, fuck that. Treasure trail. Yeah. Oh, just like... <laughs> <laughs> Big arrow. <laughs> yeah. But I think, um, yeah, I don't like the overly groomed thing. Like, because I love a pair of like dirty Snickers trousers. Like, you know, the plaster and muck on them. Just like, that lad can put up a shelf. That's what women want. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't wanna, you don't wanna bang a BO off. Man. I know, I know. But... Not in the first date, man. <laughs> That like, that like, handyman. Yeah. I think that's what she's at for Matt. Grooming. How far is too much grooming then for the perfect gentleman? Oh, I think you like you don't want a stage where a fella is taking more care of himself than a female is, like, you know, yeah, where yeah. um like the likes of the lads going on some beds, you know, it's mm. just that's a complete no no for me. Like I think it's completely fine now to take take, I suppose, pride in your appearance, yeah. but yeah, too much can be like, you know, the lads, like, you see lads there, they'd be putting fake tan on lads, getting their eyebrows done and all this sort of stuff. I think that's a step too far for I me. I think the only exceptional thing to your eyebrows if lads is a unibrow, but other than that, leave them alone. So. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, you just described one of me choose this there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Point number three, be a grown up. Now, this is where I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they mean in this point is kind of a fella who's a gentleman has his shit together. Would, would you agree with that? Or would you like a fella who's a bit in limbo more, a bit vulnerable, <laughs> but still has no, sneakers pants on? No, I, I think uh, it's very nice when a lad's mature and is like, you know, you can have a hissy fit and he just goes, calm down, we'll get this done. It's mm. grand. And that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, okay, really, yeah. yeah. But Keeping it, your cool. Yeah, whereas if another lad's like, I can't be dealing with you when you're like this. Like, that's just oh, Yeah, a yeah. fella who's like, Panicking. Mm, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Keeping cool, Matt. Yeah, I suppose you want someone that's got their own thing going on. They're fairly independent, you know, they're they're self-reliable and they can look after themselves and I suppose their care and nature. I think that's what women kind of look like. Like, you know, if you're with them, you know that this guy's got everything under control. Man, I feel like you have this under control. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> very smooth, Matt. Very smooth. Too <laughs> smooth, lad. I'm just sliding off you. <laughs> uh, number four is an interesting one. Keep language PG. <clears throat> because as Irish people, we curse a good bit. And on this podcast, we say the F word sometimes. Yeah, a lot, probably. A lot, too much. Mm-hmm. But in a conversation with women, would you be conscious of your language, Matt? Yeah, I would be. I think I'd say know your audience. Know the type of person you're speaking to. Like, you, you'll know from the tone of the conversation what they're like and whether... You know, they're not open to cursing, like, mm. but if there's a way you can put the point across without cursing, I do it that way first and foremost. And then, like, if you, it depends if you're on a date or you're at a, fi- a nice restaurant or something like that. You, you know, you want to behave in a respect- respectful way. Mm. But then the other side of it, you know, you don't want to be too straight laced or otherwise they don't see, you don't think you're any crack at all, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll get on to language. <clears throat> my language is horrendous. And, 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 and it, it has been for a while and I can't help it. it it's actually... Mm. It developed over time and I don't really, I don't worry about it. Yeah. But like when I used to be like working in Super Value, my manager would be like, well, like, how are you? And I'm like, oh, not too fucking bad. <laughs> and it would just slip out and I, and like he he had never corrected me on it because he'd probably curse a bit, like, you know, as well. Yeah. And, but then our manager, Claire, one of our managers, Claire. For the tour and all, yeah. Yeah. Like Claire is literally always saying to me like, your language, your language, mm. your language. And yeah. she's horrified by it. Like, and yeah. I just had to pull her aside and say, look. I'm not going to fucking change now. So Claire's, Claire, Claire's going to be Johnny listening Spikes. to yeah. I do what I want. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be like, give me into that fucking Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> what time is yeah. me fucking eyebrow pointing? <laughs> but, um, yeah, jokes. Yeah, no, we're missing. Um, some beds are bad. But um, I was saying it to Claire and I was like, and she was like, I'm just not used to it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, like, and it can be strange. I suppose I don't even notice how bad I am. Yeah, I did read a thing, though, that apparently if you swear, that means uh, people trust you more. You think you're honest. Yeah, yeah. don't yeah. be your authentic self. Be more self. authentic, yeah. Yeah, mm. but then you're kind of like, yeah, you, it is know your audience as you say, man. Yeah, yeah like, but you know. then at the same time, it's not like I'm going into interviews if we're doing PR or something like that. Yeah. Like if we're doing that, I'm going in like, cur- I, can, I can curtail them. <laughs> you're not interviewing yeah. children. You haven't, lost, <laughs> you haven't lost your filter completely. Like, yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And then as well on this podcast, like, Nobody told us we don't have to curse. <laughs> so until someone comes in and says, stop cursing. Yeah. You set the rules. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's fine. Yeah. It is true about a filter though. Imagine you've seen a politician coming out and be like, I'm doing my fucking best. You'd be like, all right, he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can be effective. Uh, number five, connect with people. Well, this is a funny one. 
Now we're all in the habit of staring at our phones and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And if you meet somebody to actually make eye contact, shake hands, get their name, you can really make a proper connection with somebody yeah. rather yeah. than if you don't think about get it. Get their name and immediately forget it. <laughs> like more into some names. But I think, that. I think it is important with eye contact. You can, you can tell from someone straight away if you don't make eye contact with them. There's something dodgy about them. But yeah. they don't care about the interaction. Yeah. If you meet somebody and it's like, well, how's it going? And yeah. you turn away. Or else you can start. First time you meet somebody, really make an effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 100 You can tell straight away when you're talking to someone if they're actually engaged in the conversation or not. Or they're yeah. just making small talk for the sake of it. Yeah. You know, that's the worst thing in the world. You talk to this person and they don't even care what your response is. You know, yeah. you want to make sure that you're actually listening to someone. Yeah. And paying attention to what they say to you. Mm. A lot of it is body language as well. If you actually make yourself almost approachable, you know what I mean? Like, I'm fairly close, like, whereas you're much more approachable. How are you? Than me, yeah. You'll kind of just be like, how are you? Yeah, no bother. And then I'll sink in, like, you know, on the lap. <laughs> you have the shoulders in. Yeah, and I'll like... be just crouched in the corner, <laughs> yeah. rocking. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. Johnny is probably more approachable. It's probably his body language, his kind of demeanor. I'm a little bit more closed. I don't know. In, in, that, in that sense. Six is an interesting one, right? Find your purpose. Mm-hmm. And it's true. I think people are much better people to be around mm. if they found their purpose, if they found their path. If you meet somebody who's not happy in their life, not happy in their job, probably not a great positive person to be around or probably a bit of an energy black hole. Yeah. I did, I did, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday and we were just talking about careers and stuff and I was like, you know, I read this thing the other day, success is defined as being able to do what you want. Yeah. You know, so Mm. if you, somebody's, if you're able to do what you want, then you're really are successful. So we we find a lot of people we meet in whatever you want to call it, like showbiz, whatever. People who are doing showbiz. what they want, like people who work in, in the creative space, mm. who their job is like, you know, writing songs, writing comedy, producing TV or whatever they're doing. Those people are so much fun to be around. Because mm. yeah. everybody's in such a good mood and everybody's yeah. so nice to each other. Mm. Yeah, they're happy enough with doing it. But like, I think the society as a whole, success is viewed in di- and through different lenses depending on what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like someone else's success isn't your success. You could see someone in a high flying job earning loads of money and to you they look from the outside they look mm-hmm. like, you know, they're having the right time. But that person mightn't be happy in their life, you know? Yeah. So it's just being understanding of where people are at in their lives and, you know, each their own. That's the way I see it. I think that's what it is. And and when you are surrounded by a good group of people, like if we go out and we do something all together like mm. like the group we have, there's a good vibe in it. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy for each other. I think that's the main thing as well mm. in, in, in finding the purpose and finding these people people is like if there's a couple of begrudgers and it might only take even one in the group to bring everyone else down negative waves then mm. you, gotta, you gotta keep that group tight it's very interesting but I think people respect somebody like that's you know be clear about what you want your own purpose your own style even if you're a bit out there and people don't agree with it I think they will respect they're it they're their own man you know they, yeah. they're, they do their own thing and they don't care what other people think and I think that's attractive can I get on to number 8 yeah you've been waiting you've been waiting <laughs> for this hold the door right Matt, would you hold the door open for a lady? 100%, yeah. Johnny? Yeah, I'd hold the door open for a man or a woman. You know, I wouldn't be judging mm. it on... And we got into this now. We're going to get into it now. You're not a woman. Close <laughs> the door. <laughs> and slam the door in the fella's face. No, I think... And we were saying to Matt as well, off air was... That's how you're brought, brought up, I think. It's kind of... Mm. It's manners. It's it's being decent. It's holding the door open. That kind of stuff. I mean, I wouldn't t- take it to the extreme where I was pulling a chair out for someone. You know, and that kind of stuff. But like... Just being generally nice, holding the door open, you know, saying hello mm. when you're when you're opening the door. Would you give your seats to a woman on a bus, Dublin bus, train? The woman is, let's say, my own age, same age, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Unless I was really <laughs> wrecked. <laughs> but, uh, but are you being, is that sexist then? Uh, I think some people would turn it, uh, bene- term it benevolent sexism. The girl might get a bit offended. She might think that you think that she's pregnant or something. So. <laughs> you can be taken in the wrong way, you yeah. know. But like in that scenario, I, I'd always go if, if if there's an elderly person, man or woman, oh, yeah, I let them yeah, down. Yeah. That, that's that's a no brainer. But yeah. then it's you know you, you can tell often often tell if someone gets on they have a, a load of bags, they look absolutely mm-hmm. wrecked. Then that person is obviously dying for a seat. But if you say, yeah. you know if someone jumps onto the bus and they're full of energy, <laughs> you know I'd be less inclined to get up for them. Would you if a woman got on the bus, same age as you, looking healthy and fit, would you give her your seat? Um, oh, you put me in the spot. Here. Probably not. Like, I don't think there's a need. I don't think they. I don't think they want. It should be so awkward. You'd be like, yeah. "Why are you giving me your?" Yeah, seat? exactly. Yeah. What if she says no? Yeah, yeah. no, I'm grand. The last <laughs> time I offered, Dumont said no. Yeah, I was on the train and there they, you know, you then you asked her for a number. <laughs> <laughs> she also said no. <laughs> no, um, I I just said sorry. Don't sit down there. And she said no, thanks. I think you just have to read the situation. Really, yeah. you know, with the way things are now, 
Mm. You'd be afraid to be like, do you want, do you want me seat in the bus there? And you want to be like, why? Because I'm a woman. I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, look, get him out, get him out. <laughs> Your little Stand. legs can't but handle you. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. mean to be like that. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, yeah. But no, things change over time. It's even if in, in, in a restaurant now, say say you're on a date, the gentleman, gentlemanly thing before would be for the, the man to pay. But now nearly the gentlemanly thing to do is to split the bill because, mm. you know, people want to be fair about everything, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of the way it's changed over time. Is chivalry dead, so? Do you oh. know no, not completely. Like if I if I was on the first date, I would insist on paying. Mm. And that's not being like, oh, I'm a man, I'm gonna pay. Like I'm the breadwinner. It's just like, odds are I've probably asked you to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's not the other way around. So. Yeah. Do you want to come out and you pay for it? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Trying to go on a date, you're paying though. <laughs> I don't think it but works. But I think uh, women spend a lot more on grooming themselves to kind of for going on a date. Okay. So I think that's only fair that. More, more often than not that the man does pay the bill if you went on first dates mm-hmm. and your man was like the TV we, show yeah. yeah 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 and your man said we'll split the bill mm-hmm. would you would you go on a second date with him no there you go I'd always offer to pay but like there's been times where it's like no no we split this one yeah mm-hmm. you know and would you read that as like uh, she she doesn't want to go for a second date or mm-hmm. would you read that into it uh, not really. I wouldn't. I wouldn't read over, overly much into it. Mm. But um, she doesn't want to go on a second date. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that could Just be. To that that, that could be it. There has yeah. been second dates somewhere. So you know, <laughs> there, you know, there. She might felt sorry for you. Sorry. Sorry, oh no! Sorry. I was feeling great about myself, but now more is digging in. There. Oh shit! <laughs> sorry. So, like, if you were in work, mm. and you, used, oh, we've seen this. Like, we both used to work in the same supermarket years ago, and if I seen a girl going to lift something heavy. I would offer. And I know she's well able to lift it. Like, I don't know why I'm offering. I've seen the flip side of that. So okay. I, I've seen someone offer a girl, like there's a six, six yoke, big bottle of seven up there. Look, mm-hmm. I'll carry that down for you there. And girls say, yeah, oh, thanks for a million. Jeez, cheers. And then I've seen girls saying, well, I'm not carrying that. Like, that's too heavy for me. I'm a girl. Mm. So if we're on this whole thing of like, <laughs> you know, giving up your seat and family, why can't she just carry the, the seven up? Sure, all equal. Everybody wants to be like, this is the big thing. Being equal. Yeah. Well, so is it just equal mentally and, or is it I like... I don't know, I have a friend who's scoliosis, so she can't carry heavy stuff. So she generally gets me yeah. or, you know, if she would a bag or something like that. That's fair enough. Like. Yeah, <laughs> I'd carry it for her. So it depends on the case, but it's it's lo- it's lovely that somebody, when they offer to do something for you, mm. that you're just like, oh, that's very thoughtful. It means, like, yeah. she just, women would just want men to pay attention to them. So, you know, if, like, if they pick oh. up and that you're struggling carrying a bag and they offer to it, like, it's so nice. Okay, that's an interesting thought that it's more that he's thinking, paying attention, yeah, caring. Mm. We're learning here. We're going to be <laughs> wizards coming out of here. Uh, number nine is keep your promises. What? Yeah, <laughs> we'll just give over that. Return the favor, number 10, Johnny. This is interesting. It's, it's best. Don't ever keep promises. <laughs> Don't ever keep promises. Return the favor. So when you're in the bedroom, lads, right? No. Yes, return the favor. <laughs> we had this with DJ Khaled. Yes. Yeah, many, many moons ago. This is an interesting one. The space that we're working in now, we meet so many different people. And listeners, if someone does something for you, really try to remember it and do something yeah. back. Mm-hmm. And that's like being being a lady, being a gentleman, just being a human being is just returning the favour. Like it's just being a good friend, I think. That if someone does something for you, like for your benefit, yeah. um, you know, you can help them out where you can yeah. down the line. Yeah. And then, you know, you develop your relationship that way. 100%. 100% like this. What we had to do to get Matt on this podcast. <laughs> 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 Number 11, be a gentleman and pick up after yourself. Yeah, honestly, if, think of, I if don't someone... I think either of you do that, though. Oh, shit. Oh, well, no. Your Christmas tree is still up, though. That's intentional. <laughs> that was a decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you not see we dressed it up for, as a St. Patrick's Day tree? Yeah. And now I have gathered a load of little fluffy chicks to make it an Easter tree. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I don't live with them anymore. Check and mate. No. Um, pick, pick up after yourself. That's just basic manners, isn't it? I, like, yeah. we're here in the studio. Like, for us to just get up and walk away and leave all our sheets and stuff around here now. Mm. Jack Power, sound engineer, he's in the other side there. He's going to be, when, when Brezzy comes in later, he'll be like, oh, them Johnny's are some pricks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, look at the cut of the place. Too big for their boots. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. They won't even pick up after themselves. Pick yeah. up after yourself is decent. And that's something that you, you have to carry on through every aspect you're like even when we do geeks now we try and leave the place as tidy as we can mm. unless we're pure rock stars smash television off the ground job <laughs> number 12 last and not least be you how important is this being yourself oh massively no one wants the fraud no one wants the fraud you know um, you know oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> but like 
<laughs> don't try to pretend, don't try to pretend to be someone you're not. You know, yeah. um, be you know, know your know yourself, know your own opinion, and don't be afraid to put that across to someone because ultimately people are going to respect you more for that. Mm. What about lads on the night out who are like, yeah, I'm actually a doctor, <laughs> you know, and they're not <laughs> frauds. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, it's your third our time where we give our highlights and lowlights of the week. Johnny, do you want to kick us off? What have you got? Uh, not a whole pile. I just want to say <laughs> thanks very much to uh, Camden Studios for having us. I still can't believe there's a studio on <laughs> Camden Street. We are like 50 yards from Ryan's. Hey, Jack, do you reckon you could actually run a cable all the way to the front bar of Ryan's? He's, he's done it many he's done times. It before, <laughs> Man, this place is hallowed. You know what I mean? Look, look, see in that door there? Yeah. Brazy took a shit in that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? My um, my yurt of the week is a documentary that was on BT. It's called uh, shit, what Two Tribes. It? Two Tribes, and it's about Liverpool and everything in the eighties, but not really about the soccer, more about the city and uh, all the troubles it was going through and how the soccer team got it through. It's well worth a watch, even if you don't like sport. It's just a great show. Now you're so mad for the documentaries. Last yeah, that's all I'm doing, watching documentaries in my pajamas. Last week, the two of us turned up to this work thing, wrecked, and they're like. God lads, you're working hard and we're like, ah, two of us stood up watching a Gaza documentary all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, my dirt of the week is, um, I, look, I know this is good for the environment and I'm all for the environment, mm-hmm. but paper straws, no good. What? They're dirt lad. They're, I, I got McDonald's the other night mm-hmm. and I got the, the Coke, the Coke Zero. And yeah. I swear to God, it tastes different out of, out of paper straws. And like, I'm all firm, but the paper straw, it goes so soggy. It falls to shit, lad. They're uh, not strong enough. How long was it in the, in the cup? What, what is it? Eight minutes home from cash. Mm. Uh, I'm, you know, te- I'm telling you. They use them straws all around the world, man. What is it? Yeah, well, quality straw you got there. That's it. Yeah, it must be. But like, you got a dud. Wouldn't be gone on paper straws, lads. You know The environment, lad. Yeah, but like, I'm going to get a reusable straw now. Yeah. Have it in the car. Get to be one of the big curly ones. Yeah, one <laughs> Glasses, you know, the glasses where you like drink the coke was all around in back mm. into your mouth. That and I have another dirt in is uh, I got a 99, 99 season is back in swing. There's a small bit of sunlight outside, yeah. So I got 99, um, down the country, uh, Cork. And your one said, Do you want a flake? I said, Yeah, 20 cents for the flake, not bad, that's probably around average. Okay, do you want syrup? Yeah, do you want sprinkles? Yeah, 50 cent extra. I thought a 99 came with Flake that, uh, Shit that's what makes it a 99 So did I So did I Charge me for sprinkles And do you know the way you want Put it on then She was like Do you want sprinkles love And I was like oh, Go on so Like I would have rolled it In the sprinkles mm. I know She got out a spoon lad Put it on So literally I got around Five sprinkles on it <laughs> It cost 50 cents Unbelievable 10, 10 cents sprinkles Have you got any dirt Are you happy enough this week Ah oh, man I've just been Flat out too flat out. This man can't even think. Right, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week. Same time, same channel. From me, Johnny Smacks. From me, Johnny B. From me, Maura. And me, Matt. Hey! We'll see you next week. Good luck.